It's June 15th, 2017, and I'm aboard my 1936 uh, classic motorboat Tortuga. Right now I'm standing at the forward end of the upper cabin looking aft. And I'm just going to pan around slowly, show you the cabin. There's a seat back there, and she, this cabin is all glassed in. It's a mahogany cabin house with laminated fur beams on the top and tongue and groove or V groove fur up there. So there's the side view. And we'll pan across and look out the forward windows. All together, this cabin house, which I built four years ago, has 19 windows. And two, four, six, seven, eight, nine of them open. So we get plenty of ventilation if we want, and there's lots and lots of light. It's very pleasant to sit up here in the evening in a harbor anchored out, and you're right there in the harbor. The boat includes, in addition to plenty of views, right down here, uh, the top thing that you see is the control for the Wabasto diesel forced air heating system, and there's one of the ducts. There's another duct in the lower cabin, so the boat has heat and can be made quite toasty in short order even when the temperature is down in the 30s. Here's the view of the forward. From, I've moved a little bit back. There's the helm and the helm station with the instruments, which I mounted individually. And I'm going to open up the engine compartment now and show you the propulsion system. When I bought Tortuga, the boat was equipped with a 1952 vintage Chrysler Crown Flathead 6 gasoline engine. I removed that engine and rebuilt the engine compartment completely and installed this little gem which is a Volvo Penta D240 diesel engine. This is a 40 horsepower engine and it will push Tortuga up to a bit over 9 knots at wide open throttle and cruise the boat very comfortably at about 7 knots at 2000 RPMs. The controls are over here. I have a single engine, a single lever control for the throttle and shifter. And here's the Volvo gauges. Also, I have my windlass control so I can launch the anchor from right here. I don't have to go forward. And also, this is a, an override for the automatic fire extinguisher system which is down there it's wired up to the engine so that if it goes off it shuts the engine off and that override is to turn the engine back on in case you feel like you still need to move so here we go that's the upper cabin so now I'll move in and show you the lower cabin here we are in the lower cabin this cabin overall is a bit over 15 feet long we're looking forward right now from the aft corner of it and there's a berth here. Forward to that, there's a cabinet with shelves in it. And up there is the head, which has a Wilcox Crittenden Skipper II head. Behind the cabinet door in the head is a holding tank. And there's a sink. I'll just walk up there and show you the sink. There's a very simple sink in here. Right here which is, has only cold water because it takes too long to get hot water up here from the water heater and wastes a lot of water. So I decided just to go with cold. That's all you really need. We'll look back. And here's the other side, another settee. This cabinet here is a hanging locker. And moving aft, have a small countertop which works as a desk. I have a swing out seat that isn't mounted yet so you can sit there at the desk and work or what have you. Over here is the galley. That's an alcohol stove there, an Origo two burner alcohol stove. Very easy to use and very safe. 
And here is a compromise from the tra traditional appearance of the boat. And that is a Dometic 40 quart refrigerated cooler. Then there's a bronze sink that came with the boat. When I got the boat, I thought about replacing this bronze sink until I found out how much the darn things cost and decided that a thousand dollar sink was worth keeping. Now here I've got the, sh the uh, ceiling out and some work to do on the counter work. I had a deck leak that I finally have gotten under control and I ripped out that ceiling because the deck leak had rotted it and over the next couple of weeks I'm going to rip off this countertop and install a new countertop and new ceiling. There's my hurricane lantern. Underneath the sink there's a cabinet. This drawer here is, just, is very shallow. It's just a silverware drawer. Down there in that cabinet it's sort of a, an equipment cabinet. To the right is the water heater. It's a six gallon water heater. And to the left at the back of the cabinet are two uh, diesel fuel filters and this valve so that I can switch from one to the other on the fly. If I have a plugged filter I just have to flip a valve and keep going. Underneath this berth there is a 26 gallon water tank and that pretty much covers everything. If I look underneath the other berth I'll just flip it up here. There are accesses to finished stowage. So each of these stowages is accessed there and they're all fully painted. I'm outside the boat now just to show you the cabin house. It's the aft end of the cabin house, aft deck. Look up the side here. There's a cowl vent for engine ventilation. And the foredeck, there's a butterfly hatch in the cabin top but for the lower cabin, which puts a lot of light in there. And this hatch is over the head. Up here, we have a Lumar Profish 700 compass and a Delta 22 pound anchor. It's self launching so that I don't have to fool with it. I just flip the switch at the helm and down she goes. Look at the whole boat from over here. Here's the starboard side of the boat. You can see the running lights up there under, on the name boards, cabin top handrails, and the side decks. Since I bought this boat, among other things, in addition to installing the engine, which I did in 2011, I also in 2012 built the new cabin house and also rebuilt the decks. They used to be Alaskan yellow cedar and were in very poor shape and I rebuilt them with marine plywood and fiberglass over so now they won't leak. And you can see the four bronze ports that open giving decent ventilation down below and that's pretty much the tour of Tortuga. Hope you enjoyed it.